Testing. 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 Alright. Well, I highly apologize for the last Great Ace Attorney VOD. Because... Of the hour plus that was had no game audio, I didn't check the entire footage to see if my sound regular volume went away. If my oh, sorry, not my regular volume, but my voice volume. That's what I meant to say. I never checked that. But uh, any audio that was lost, I apologize for that. I muted myself to try to fix it on stream. I just forgot to. Yeah, I just forgot to unmute ev mute, unmute the game audio. I mute, checked everything else, and just then off the game. Oh, so we're already in the game because I w I wanted to double check the room in case something it was something I missed to examine. And so I was I didn't find anything. So I'm just gonna briefly go through like. Oh, that's not what I want. I just want to briefly go through like. Always present this and say, have anything. Hey, first try, you know what? Hey, I was shocked when I found out they were related to the case. The Redhead League, I mean. Personally, it wasn't their plan to swindle everyone that surprised me. It was the fact that so many Redhead people gathered from all over London that day. A certain great detective being among them. I expect those two are in their cells as we speak, wishing they'd never dreamt up their little plan. Maybe they're busy plotting the next one. My voice isn't perfect, so I'm... Hope nothing com comes up. No, that, that was a little... That was... I'm just... Yeah, that was nothing. I'm just gonna go, keep going through. Just in case. Just in case. Okay, I, I've given... I didn't want to look this up, and I didn't want to, like, go through all this myself. So, even if I present it before, I'm just going to represent it, just in case. The Reaper! At, la at last I get to take my revenge! Kazuma. Lord Von Zeeks isn't responsible for your father's death, and he's not the Reaper. He's the defendant, and deserving of a fair trial. You mean, like the one my father had? It's a closed trial now, too. The conditions are exactly as they were ten years ago. And even if it ruffles some feathers, I have a plan to show that man wh for what he really is. Kazuma. Oh, that, that was something. Oh. Alright, I'm surprised that the, the gun of all things was something that... Something you commented on. You know, it might also be that I need to like look at a piece of evidence just in case I'm missing something and then show it to him. I'll I'll do that after that. I might even cut that out. Oh, here we go. This came from the trial, didn't it? As something a, a little dubious. I'm dubious. I mean, the fact that no time of death was recorded on Spectre Gregson's autopsy report. Yes, there were some unexpected turns in the courtroom earlier. The suggestion you came up with certainly took everyone by surprise. The idea that the victim died the previous day at some other location is quite something. Well, considering when the pocket watch had stopped and the scorch marks on the candle, it's certainly a distinct possibility. The evidence in the scene both point to it. To be honest, it bothered me too. So I paid a visit to the auto autopsy room earlier. The coroner responsible wasn't there, but I got a name. It's Dr. Gory. <laughs> with, with, with all these coroner names and, and like just being like, Oh, I'm Gory! Oh, I, I deal with bodies! Oh. Thanks, a thanks, A's attorney for all these... All, all these coroner names. Uh, if it won't trouble you, Kazma Summer, we'd very much like to speak with the coroner too. Okay. I think we found what we need to do. Of course, the last thing I wanted for 
is for anything to be brushed up under the carpet. Scotland Yard's autopsy lab laboratory is behind Logate Cemetery. Logate Cem- uh, By Barclay Prison, you mean? Ah, you know it, don't do you? The prison where my father was incarcerated and robbed of his life. Cosmo Summer. Well, thank you. We'll pay a visit to the labor laboratory later today. All right, that's what we were missing. All right, Brinuske. That's the wrong button. I want to thank you. What for? For this. He safeguarded the soul of the Yasuji clan. Well, it is a famous sword that's been in your family for generations. My only slight regret is that I never got the chance to draw before I returned it to you. Karuma is said to have been forged by a master swordsmith during the Sengoku War Warring Stakes period. I come from a long lineage of warriors, many of whom were expert swordsmen. Well then, you're a chip off the old block, I'd say. This blade, Karuma, is the symbol of the Asoji clan's honor and might. Apparently, one of my father's apprentices even took the blade's name for his surname. Really, Karuma. It does sound formidable, that's for sure. Sixteen years ago, when my father was a visiting student here in London, he had this sword forever at his side. That's why it means so much to me that I have it by my side again now, too. Ah, the smile. And that is all thanks to you. It was an honor. Now, I have preparations to make for tomorrow. Perhaps I said a little too much. Kazma, you've changed. No, Rinuske. I haven't changed at all. It's you who's changed. You lie. You were our defense attorney. Now you are our prosecutor. That's a clear definition of a change. I'm compl I can completely understand your resentment of Morvan Zeke's given what happened. But the fact is, those events in this case are... Well... Unrelated. Is that what you want to say? How can you be so sure? What do you mean? Never mind. That man is a reaper, and it's for that reason that the inspector was killed. I'm going to prove as much in court tomorrow. By whatever means necessary. I can't let you do that, Kasma. I know you'll do what you have to do as a lawyer. I'm sure I don't need to tell you. I won't be taking any prisoners in the courtroom. I expect nothing less. Until tomorrow, then. In the old Bailey. Give me a sec here. Alright, new lo new location. Alright, let's just review what places we have. Uh, according to what's, what Susado says, oh, that's, I looped. Uh, no need to go here. This is just our legal consultancy, of course. We don't need to go here because it's where we live. We don't need to go here. We go. We've already talked to Strongheart. We just went to talk to uh, what's his face, Mikotoba. We do need to visit the pr governor's office because we need to talk to the warden or whatever, Governor Kaden. Wait, what? what, what? What's in some ways this place seems rather to rather suit Lord Vanzi. Oh, dear, did I say that? <laughs> okay, cool. All right, then the crime scene. We haven't actually visited the crime. We haven't revisited the crime scene at all today. The hospital bed. We already visited that. Now we've been here, and 
This is a new location. I don't want to actually go to the new location right away. I'm, I, let's let's take care of this. See if we're blocked off or something. We're probably gonna be blocked off or something. Oh, bird! Oh, back again, are you? Oh uh, yes. Hello. I heard all about your investigations. I read, I read the report just now. You found him, eh? Vigil. Yes, luckily. Well, anywho, the lad it doesn't ain't, the name work here no more, so your case doesn't know what to do with Barkley. I would name like you. To get the wrong idea about that. Of course, yes. Mr. Vigil stopped working here ten years ago now, so. Yes, we've seen his dismissal notice. We haven't we? He was given the chop. I give her. You kid very well. So, how about a wee handicap biscuit? Oh, they really are like little handcuffs, and as hard as eyes too. So, what brought you down here today? Well, something we'd like you to ask you about, actually. Is that so? Jeez, this guy is going to give me a coughing fit. Ooh. Golly, I'm lightheaded after that one. Sorry. I'm glad I muted that. We believe there might have been a document that disappeared from Genshin Astrogy's cell. I think it's been called the Astrogy Papers or something. Oh, we're just going to straight up say it. Did, did I know say? Greg says death has not to do with things that might have happened here properly. Live the past of the fast, laddie. Let's not foot our boot in irrelevant details. This expression's changed completely. We're clearly on to something here. Alright, uh... Ten-year-old legacy. We actually, I don't think we've actually examined this room because we can't... We haven't been able to with him in the way. That murderer's botched execution, and the whole miserable escape. They were Buckley's darkest hour, I. A shocking embarrassment. Because the convict had a collaborator on the prison staff, you mean? Aye. A shame. The coroner who confirmed the death of the man after his execution, Courtney Scythe. And my chief warder at the time, Vigil, who was in charge of the whole affair. But Mr. Vigil says he didn't, doesn't... Didn't know anything about it. Let's go with nature, otherwise, eh? More handcuffs? Oh! How can I say no? You never have too much iron in diet. When Mr. Vigil was was handed his dismissal notice as a result of what happened, he was sort of despaired. He jumped out of your office window, did he? I did not like to say. But that's just visual trying to get out of it. Do not. Do you know, think he he would not have jumped from the shock of his crime being his bros, eh? I do. You wouldn't a say otherwise, though, would you? Of course, I can a shun shun our responsibility myself. I shouldn't a have let him deceive me. Actually, there's barely any way I can what went on at the time now. Would Gregson have been murdered and Dr. Sykes preferred to have having any visitors? No visitors? Someone obviously doesn't want her giving anything away. Hmm. Well, we're not going home empty handed! And I wouldn't dream of sending you back and would know it. No, Kimber. Here, take a handcuff or two. Oh! Well, it would be weird to say no! We wouldn't want to become an. become anemic! I suppose if there's anybody who might still can know, still can know about what happened, what happened back then, it'd be that last from the forensic, forensic division, Maria Gori. Oh, well, we know her first name now, Maria Gori. Hey, say daughter, say daughter. Shouldn't they have no more? Just the one. 
but the wee is following her mom's footsteps. You didn't ever see her without, without a scalp on her hand. Oh, we, 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 I think we've seen her before. Ah! Yeah, we're going to flash back to this. Dr. Sight's daughter, Maria Gori. What can you do with talking to her? Ah! So, she's Dr. Sight's daughter, but her surname is Gori. Aye, there's some family history, I'm sure, but I didn't get into the incident of it. She grew up watching her mom, working with the bodies of folk who died in the strange circumstances. And let's see, decided to do the same with her own life. I can understand it myself. Perhaps she, she was driven by the deep respect by deep respect for her mother. Perhaps. Anywho, she was in charge of Gregson's autopsy, I believe. Right. And the coroner responsible for this incomplete report. Okay. Okay, this was our hint to actually talk to uh I think this was our hint to to go talk to uh Cosma about it. Okay. No one told me once that the wee lassie always loved her mom's stories about cutting up bodies. There's even a rumor that she used to, to listen to the funeral marches a lullaby. Well then perhaps her mother might have told her about the autopsy from the case ten years ago. I'd say there's a fun chance at least. After all, that was a life-changing case for all of us. We really need to speak to to Miss Gory herself about this, I think. Well, thank you very much. Well, I'm glad I went here first. I know happy about my, any part of this. It took years for London to finally forget the whole prosecutor professor business. Can you not give out on this, laddie? Stop asking pointless questions. I, I'm sorry. I don't like dredging up the all these painful memories for everyone. Can you notice just stay away now? Leave me and no one tonight to come back here, eh? Hey, no, I'm not leaving. I've got t to talk about the papers. How'd you come... How'd you come to know... To the Kenna boot? How'd you come to know about that, Letty? There's no... There's no many folk e even here in the prison who'd heard of those papers. Ah! Uh, well... I can't tell Mr. Vigil told me. I'm afraid our sources may remain confidential, sir. Th thanks, Susato. We've been led to believe the papers are actually a last will and testament. Is that right? The professors. Or rather, Gitchin Asogies. Aye, that's right. You will inform Jimmy. Oh, is that the, is that the end of the silent treatment? But then after the convict's execution, mysteriously vanished from the cell, didn't it? Hey, there's no, you, you have to half cock there. I think you didn't quite get your facts straight. It was there in the cell, exactly where it should have been. Oh, that would be heard elsewhere. Let me have a wee hole, hook, wee hook around here. I'm sure I can find it. I he uh see uh oh the last will and testament of Genshin Asoji written with a calligraphy brush. Of course, I can never read a word of these Japanese squiggles. But mine, uh, but I mind it says he leaves all his worldly possessions to his son back on his homeland. Yes, that's correct. That's the gist of it. So these are the Asoji papers. Aye, of course they are. Papers written by Asagi. It ain't down to put it. There's no mystery here, Lily. That's your lot. After all this stramish, all this sl slash of an execution, we sent up the man's possessions back to his clan in Japan. And that was the end of it. I think we ought to make a record of this, Mr. Harahodo. Just in case. Jeez, jeez, I got scared. I, 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 during these Ace Attorney streams, I always check to see if I'm speaking or not by rubbing, like, the mute button. 
just rubbing it, not like, not like I accidentally, or like this. Uh, that was meant to be a joke. But I, re I rubbed it, and I thought it was on the top. I thought it was, I thought it was muted for for a while. I don't know, remember when I did that. But that's fine. I'm, I'm good. I need to. I'm gonna double check to see if the game audio is working. On. Yeah, it's going. All right. I'm, 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 I'm like being very paranoid. I'm sorry. One thing before you go on your way, Mr. Naruto. Oh, yes. Well, his papers are not to do with Gregson's death. I prefer if you did not make no mention of the men outside this office. Or rather, I mean, they just prefer it. Consider an order from the highest levels of, of our government. I understand. Alright, well, let's actually just take a look at that. Because we can read it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure enough. Here we go. Okay. Trans the paper is translated into English. I, against an G, hereby request that upon my death, any and all material possessions and wealth belonging to me in London to be delivered to my son, Kazuma Asoji, in the Empire of Japan. It is with deep sadness that I accept my fate in this foreign land. In my knowledge, I will never never see my homeland or family again. But I regret, regret, regret nothing about my, my chosen path. That's going to be our decisive evidence, isn't it? The only the only weapon I have left. That's going to that's going to be our decisive evidence. I've been thinking long and hard about this weekend, about this game. I have a theory on who the culprit is. I will not say it, but I have a theory, and I do not like it. Alright. You're not going to let us examine this room, are you? An axe? Oh, we are going to ex examine this place. An axe, a hunting rifle, and four pairs of handcuffs. That's a daunting collection. Uh, there's a story behind every one of those. You mean... The rifle was a famous killer's murder weapon, and the axe was weird by an infamous executioner, and the handcuffs were the ones to use the mobile and the fierce four-legged beast when it was arrested. I think you're the realms of fantasy now, isn't it, Herdo? <laughs> Not those kind of stories, Jimmy. That axe was the one I used to chop down the cherry tree at my house, at my house. Mrs. Cat Kaden was, was named best pleased. Huh. <laughs> and the cuts on the left. Are the ones I caught my first burglar with back when I was a poppy. Well, that's that's a good that's something good to keep on the wall. The stories were a little different to those you imagined, I think, weren't they? Yes, to my relief, and, and in some sm small way, my disappointment. All right, it was with the guillotine clock. I don't like this. This grandfather clock is... It's fitted with a terrifying blade that keeps dropping down! It's modern than the guillotine, a first execution device. You might have heard of it. And yes, a fool you ask, it can chop. Heads off, you mean! There is no carrots and parsnips and so forth. <laughs> I never heard about decapitating a carrot. Oh. Place a large carrot up on him there in the wood. But it'll you, you, be clean too. Well, the blade must have had an almost indes indescribable edge on it then. It's probably like too small for an actual person's head. Although you can stick your hand in there, prob Yeah, you can definitely stick your hand in that. And that, that's a scary thought. I never expected to find a pair in a prison. Must be the governor's pet. It's Polly! It's the murderer! Given where we are, it's hard not to see the poor creature as a prisoner. Let me out! Did he kill me? Ah! Has the bird learned to mimic the plaint plaintive cries of the inmates of the cells? Oh, no. He's one of three siblings, you see. He still calls out the names of his two uh, two brothers like that all the time. Right. Let me out! Did I kill you? Ah! 
kill me! Aye, aye. I heard you, laddie. You want your dinner, eh? Did I do it? Uh... Oh, okay. Uh... Alright. Let's just move elsewhere. I suppose these are all four governors of Barkley Prison, are they? Or former... Either that or former inmates who the governor has sent to the gallows. Hold on, I'm gonna take a drink. Oh dear, you all have such severe expressions. I really couldn't deny either possibility. Especially the one on the extreme right. This expression goes beyond severe into a whole new territory. That was me. Ah! ah! I'm terribly sorry, sir. Is that a prerequisite of the job, perhaps? Having a severe expression, I mean. <laughs> of course it's not. Although. Let's take it into consideration. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one on the far right, it does kind of look like him, but he's got a beard. So he, he must have shaved that off. A lot. Yeah, that one definitely has a beard, so he, he definitely, he for sure shaved that. This one kind of looks like, uh, what's his face? Th that, what's his face from Batman? It kind of looks like the butler. Why can't I think of his name? Oh, whatever. That deer has been staring at me for a while now. It has? The poor thing can't fit through the small hole in the wall. But it can't, but it can't get its head back out again now again either. Just give me a woeful, imploring look. It's not real, Mr. Arrow Hurdle. It's stuffed. What? I mean, yes, of course it is. For a moment. That was another assassin sneaking into in via the ventilator. <gasps> SOURCE! I don't like to say, but I think perhaps you need to reread the Adventures of Verlock Sholmes. We got a bookcase. Or, like, a document case. It's a very large cabinet full of papers, isn't it? It's labeled Inmate Register. Look! All the files in alphabetical order. Yeah, at least they're organized. That's 50 years worth the records of Barclays inmates. 50 years? Jeez, man. Whether or not they left alive after serving their term. All the details of boot the crimes are committed on re are record and recorded in there. Like an epitaph for you, might say. A record of crimes and punishments. How dispiriting. And yet... This man sees me enjoying tea and biscuits as he talks about it. Jeez, man. I mean, you do... Any crime you get is put on record, so that makes sense. Alright, I think that's it. Uh... Yeah, okay. Let's go to the forensics lab. Jeez, man. I don't... I don't want to... What the heck? What the, what have you what have you done to the place? This place really is creepy, isn't it? Well, oh, being a dead room, it's probably far the spirits of the dissected. But actually, it's a rather pleasing scent of roses in the air. Well, being a dead room. The coroner probably needs a bullet sent like that to mask the odor of death. Oh, pfft. You make you make Sasato upset. Um, Iris, do you think we could change the subject? She's only ten. What? What, what was that? This is kind of creepy. Oh, there you are. Uh, Dr. Gori? What? Uh, that noise before. What just happened to my toes? I'd be dead meat if I didn't keep it part of the keen edge on them. Right. We're following the cunning fibers on the dorms. An expertly sharpened scalpel. 
cuts like cheese. Would you like a demonstration? Oh, yes, please. I'd love to see. <laughs> then, I think you'll do nicely. Huh? No, no, no. I, no, no, I wouldn't do nicely at all. I mean, maybe some other time. <laughs> was that a tut? No, I was a tisk. Well, we came here to ask questions, so... Alright, well... We, we meet someone new... Look at this badge! Uh, can I ask your opinion about this? Don't forget! You're responsible for putting my name in my my, my jail! Why should I help you? Oh. She, she, she didn't forget. Time of death. Um, we have actually met before. I'm a lawyer, if you remember. You're not dead yet. What? So Mama said I was, wasn't to cut you up and she's so strict about things like that. Well, good. Talk to Scythe with some scruples, at least. Oh dear! Looks like she's not interested in talking to us, for the time being, anyway. For the time being? You mean, until we die? I hope that's a way off. Sorry, but I wasn't planning on dying anytime soon. <laughs> Surely this is some less dramatic way of making her listen. Okay. Well, I doubt this will work. I'm gonna just look at her dolls and stuff. This looks different to before. Of course, Mr. Naruto, Miss Gory is a young maiden. She has all sorts of charming little dolls and the like around her place of work. Look. Oh yes, you're right. Perhaps she's not so strange after all. I like how she made the skeleton hold one of her bird masks. They're high practice. Sorry? Mama always said that operations and dissections require speed and accuracy. As I take out my needle and thread, it's just three new dolls every day. Ah, right. I used to make livers or kidneys or intestines, but Mama told me to make something more friendly instead. That's quite different to what I imagined. I actually, I, I kind of like it. Uh, okay, I guess we, I guess we're free to look around the room. You didn't clean up the blood off the table? The table and a sharp set of tools. Would you consider each an isolation? It all quite, looks quite innocent. So why is that when you put them side by side, they seem so horribly dis I think we've actually read this before. Uh, I'm just gonna skip through this. Oh, okay, here we go. That's my best section table. It's too high for me, though. It is. I feel for dying in my sleep. It would really hurt. What? You, you mean you sleep in here? Hard times work is very involved. It's usually too late to think about going home when I'm finished. But I have bad dreams when I sleep here, and I always end up falling onto the floor. I like to exchange the table for no one. Maybe you should just go home. Ugh. Do you you mean you say to sl you sleep on the piles of blood? Jeez, man. Oh, that's that's everything over there. Oh, I guess the medicine cabinets. I, I think they were poisoned here last time I checked. Look at all the bottles and the shelves in the cabinets. Formative of chemical. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, I do remember this. Yeah, I, I remember all this. Oh, that's that's literally exact same. She didn't even have any, any new input. The skeleton now holding her mask. Yeah, okay. I, I've read this all before. Yeah, he, he just ignores the skeleton. It's ten people. Pardon? It's me for the bones of ten different people. I'm mixed together. So my best work. I, I was admiring the case actually. The scary skeleton inside is something I intend to endure as best I can. You're strange. I wonder who 
the, who is the strangest? <laughs> Alright. Okay, the owl. Oh, okay, you owl and the crow. It's because of... The ta taxidermy mounts, yeah. Okay. I think I remember... This one I don't remember as much, but I think I kind of remember. Yeah, the Daruma doll, I do remember that. Okay, and that's the exact same. What the... Oh yeah, the intestines and stuff. Yeah, I kind of... I think I also checked this or something. <laughs> ah, that's how you like that, but it contains monkey brains. What? Okay. Oh my, oh my. The composition is similar to a human brain, so they make for interesting study material. I guess it's the same as like a pig's heart being very similar to a human heart. And then next track, like, we have monkey. No, 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 Monkey. Hang on, I've got I've got to do something real quick. Uh, there we go. God damn it, man! Fuck! God damn it, man! Fuck! Fuck! This sucks, man! This game fucking sucks, man! Fuck! I can't catch a fucking break! Fuck! God, people, he's a god play Winston. For fuck's sake! If you say so. Oh dear. Time when I still thought it was just some pickled filled with boshi plums seems so long ago already. Yeah, it was a couple weeks ago, so yeah. It was a decently long time ago. All right, we gotta actually show her something. Uh, how about this autopsy report, Doctor Gory? We actually came here to ask you about this. He was very good. Good? Sorry. His skin didn't snag my blade once. And very little miss. His joints slunk here easily. This muscle tissue was a pleasure with workers. <laughs> oh, we gotta skip those details. Poor, poor Gregson. But there's one thing about the report that's caught my attention. He don't seem to have recorded a time of death. That's not my fault. Jeez, the pale white skin. Oh, well, at least we got to get her to see her face now. Oh, that made me jump. Then please, tell us what happened. All right, well, we got to check now. So why doesn't this autopsy report include the victim's time of death, then? It's really the most crucial detail. I was told not to write it. Uh oh What? By whom? Male Strong- What?! The Lord Chief Justice, he came here. Lord Strongheart came. He said that from the witness stand, statements about the gunshot and the other evidence, it was obvious. The man clearly died at 5 p.m. on November 1st, when the gunshot was heard. But that's not the time of death you wrote on the report. He didn't write it. He didn't write anything. Excuse me. Was that some reason you didn't include it? There was, a, there was a little, like, lag in there. That was kind of weird. Dr. Gori, if you're hiding something under Lord Stronger's instructions, then sooner or later, you're going to go the same way as your mother. Give her here, then. Hmm? Oh, what? She's she's literally autopsy, updating the autopsy report as we speak. What she's scribbling so furiously? There. You, you've written... What's what she written? Tell us! Indeterminate. But! According to Dr. Corner, Dr. Gory, accurate estimation of the time of death is not possible. Okay. Indeterminate. What do you mean by that? What was the time of death? Why was the time of death indeterminate? 
the specimen was brought in, it was still fresh. So the time of death could easily have coincided with the with the, the gunshot was heard. But there's one more discrepancy. What discrepancy? There's a fried fish in the pocket of the specimen's overcoat. The fish has stirred a rat. What? There's a victim that liked fresh fish. He presumably liked to eat it before he went off. Well, yes. What are you really trying to say? Well, I guess the fish saved us, kinda. It's possible that someone tried to manipulate the apparent time of death. Manipulate the? Is that even possible, dude? Yes, you put a person in a fridge, in a in a cold storage. Theoretically, if you want to chill the body nice, you can delay the onset of putrefaction. 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 I know, I think, I, I know the word, but I don't know, like, the pronunciation. Putrefaction. If the overcoat was not the body at the time, then only the fish would have started the rot. But today's science is not yet possible to determine if the body was chilled or not. But today's science is dense enough to let you freeze a corpse, it seems. But surely, to chill a corpse like that would require an enormous electrical refrigerator. Huh. That's a good point. Either that or snow. I don't imagine many households in London are equipped with such a device. No! Definitely not! Maybe in a factory! Or some other special places! I don't recall seeing any factories or such like on Fresno Street, though. I wonder if that inspector's body had been chilled somehow. What might the actual time of death have been? I couldn't say for sure. But the most, it may have been a day earlier. No. In other words, it would, it would cor cor corroborate your previous deduction, Mr. Naruto. Okay. That Spectre Gregson was killed a day before his body was discovered, at a different location. Did you inform Lauren Stronghold of, of this possibility? He simply said that there were no electrical refrigerators of that size in the vicinity. Interesting. Oh yes, one other thing. Something that the governor at Barclay Prison told us. He said that your mother, Dr. Scythe, was responsible for confirming the death of the, of the professor after his execution. The professor? Apparently, you always enjoyed listening to your mother's stories about her work. So... We were wondering if you might know something about what happened ten years ago. That's not all Mama did. Sorry? My Mama... ...cared out the autopsy of Clint Van Six as well. Okay. Oh, and she looks like she's about to cry. I'm gonna check something real quick. Alright. Uh, uh, what? Really? The brother of Lord Van Six, the professor's final victim. The idea of killing your aunt's house and a member of the aristocracy was a completely unthinkable back then. But the detective in charge of the investigation insisted it was meticulously author authorized. The detective being Inspector Gregson, of course. Quite an accomplishment for one man. The autopsy provided a final clear need for the arrest of Kelly. And Mama was there for the historic event. What does all this mean? You know, that amazing autopsy happened right here in this very room. The Fixer and Clint Van Zeeks. They both spent their final moments before their burial at the dis dis dissection table there. So this lab, Mama's lab, was instrumental in some of the country's most important events. She really is proud of her mother. What if you tell us more about what exactly happened back then, Dr. Gory? Alright, well, we got more to talk about now. Uh, yeah. No, that's not, that's not what I... That's the... Confirmation of death. The professor's execution was Mama's first big case. 
She has to be in attendance at Berkeley Prison's execution chamber. And sign the certificate to confirm the convict's death. Baba is the best coroner in the world, you know. I was so proud of her. But the execution didn't actually take place. No. And was too. Mama actually helped with the jailbreak. I didn't want to know. Oh dear. You found out recently, do you mean? I believed in her. And Mama. But. Now I wonder if I'm starting as down as they bath as her. Oh, I kind of feel bad for her now. You mean because you omitted the time of death on this autopsy report. But that's because Lord Strongheart forbade you from including it. Just like Baba. I'm sure she was coerced by somebody too. Yes, that's my feeling as well. There's no doubt that there were powerful forces that played ten years ago. The execution could have been staged without a lot of people at the prison knowing about it. Obviously, the prison governor must have been in on it as well. The big man with the little handcuffs? Quit already he told us. He was tricked by the chief warder. He says he knows nothing about it. Of course he said that. I'd say the same thing. Just who was behind that jailbreak all those years ago? All right. You mentioned the autopsy of Clint von Zeeks. Who's at, at a time when carrying out autopsies of murder victims was very unusual? It's still not a practice that's observed in our country, even now. It turned out that he was profess the professor's final victim. The autopsy was performed. Mama was present. Although only as a secondary assistant. The person leading the procedure was called Dr. John H. Wilson! WILSON! That's right, my daddy! And there was one other person present, the primary assistant. He was a visiting student from the Far East. Oh, crap. Wait, a visiting student? Must have been my father. Yuji Mikotoba. Mikotoba? I had no idea Professor Mikotoba had been involved in something so important. But the outcome of that historic autopsy was the discovery of a vital piece of evidence that led to the capture of the professor. So that's how they came to identify Genshin Asuji as the infamous mass murderer. Do you happen to know anything about that piece of evidence? Can you tell us any more? Would you like to see the records for yourself? Would that be alright? What's the point of keeping records if people can't look at them? They're filed under V at the back of those cupboards. With all the other records from the last decade. Thank you. Let's see. Van Zeeks, Van Zeeks. Um, that's strange. What, Mr. Naruto? They aren't here. There's nothing under Von Zeke's. There must be. Perhaps somebody took them away? No. No one's allowed to take documents related to the professor's case out of this room. But you're right. They're gone! Well, when was the last time somebody took looked at them? Do you remember? It was... Oh, yes, I remember now. It was two years ago. Two years ago? A consulting detective came one day, saying I can see the record. Awww. Is it freaking... Is it freaking Gregson? No. You don't mean... Herlock Shobbs was his name. What? Shobbs? Deep down, I knew that was coming. No. I... Oh, 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 okay. Do you think he stole the records? Oh no, surely not. Iris, that can't be right, can it? Oh, she's in shock. Uh, Iris?
Oh, gosh. Uh, um, Bruno? I hope you don't mind, but... What is it, Iris? I just remember something we were going to do. I'm going to have to leave, you know? Oh! This is very sudden, Iris. Well, we'll come with you then. Oh, no! No, 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 there's no need! You and Bruno can take your time here! Bye, Bernard, and good luck! She just ran out. Wait a minute, little girl. <laughs> Me? I remember now. You've been here before, haven't you? Have you, Iris? No, Iris, what are you talking about? No. Yes, two years ago, when the detective came. Oh. Okay, I thought you were talking about just the, the other trial. You were with him, weren't you? You were a living specimen then, too. That's the way it usually works, yes. What, did she steal it? Was I? I don't really remember. Anyway, sorry, my mustache! Wait, Iris. I'll bring my papa for you when you get home. What's the matter with her? She's behaving... Behaving really strangely all of a sudden. Hmm. Well, in that case, we won't keep you any longer either. It's been quite a while since I had any visitors. This was really fun. But next time you come, I prefer if you are ready for a dissection. Oh my. No! I can't make any promises. Sorry. It's a bit strange that the records of Clint Van Zeeks' autopsy have been dis have disappeared. But I think we we've asked all we came to ask now. Uh I think we gotta I think we gotta go to show him the suite and talk to Oh no, apparently not. Where do we gotta go? Oh, the crime scene yeah, of course. Actually, I'm good. Actually, I need to use a bathroom, so I'm, I will take this time to go on a quick intermission. I will be right back, and I will make sure that everything sounds fine when I get back. Ah, oh, man, why do I always... Why do I have... Well, it's because I don't have anybody else besides me during these Ace Attorney streams. Because even with John Wur here, wor wor worked on Tuesdays, he couldn't show up because he wants to play this game himself later. And people also don't want to tune into these streams way late. Like, I mean, like, way late into the actual plot because they want to play the game and don't want to be spoiled. But either way, yeah, I'll be right back. I'll use the bathroom and I will be, and yeah, I'll be right back. Uh, intermission screen. There we go. I'm back. If you heard that, if you heard me flipping the pages of the court record, that's just me making sure that my 
sound is perfectly fine, and it's yeah, everything sounds just as just as it should. I'm I'm way too I'm 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 way too cautious, man. Kind of apologize for this, but at the same time, I kind of don't because I also really want this to go well after the last time. Okay, let's let's go back to the crime scene and investigate. The police are still busily investigating in here, then. But Gina's nowhere to be seen. Where is she? Yes, it has been blissfully quiet, hasn't it? Perhaps she's out investigating on her own, practicing with her bo what her boss taught told her, taught her. I only said with her boss is like, oh wait, her boss is dead. Well, I expect she'll be back before too long. Shall we wait? Actually, there's something different about this room since the last time we were here, isn't there? We can always use the time to investigate more thoroughly. I think I see what you're talking about. These. No, oh, that's no. Okay, I can't examine that. There's a lamp here, I guess. Photograph of Miss, Mrs. Vigil. Realizing the identity of this lady was a very great clue to exposing Mr. Gossip's true identity. He obviously loved his wife very dearly. Which is why he felt he couldn't tell her the truth. The transformation was incredible, wasn't it? Just from that big twisted lip. Yes, he went to extraordinary efforts to play the part of Hugh Boone convincingly. Although, it really didn't seem like it was much of an effort to me. Hmm. I say it, I have to agree. It's almost as if Mr. Vigil's true character. People really are very hard to fathom at times. Maybe they're talking about this. This, like, treasure chest, or, like, case or something, whatever. This little trunk wasn't here before, was it? Oh! It appears to be made of metal. It must be very heavy. That's not... That's metal? That's not leather? Okay. I wonder who, to whom it belongs. There's some initials on, on the outside. Look. T-G... Oh, it's Gregson's. Let's ask one of the policemen if they know how, how it came to be here. Alright! Why? What'd you think you're doing? That's my truck, Dennis! Hands off! Oh, it's yours. Oh, it's because Gregson's dead. Gina! Oh, where were you hiding? I don't know. He leaves something unintended for a few seconds. And I mean, Tom, Dick, and Aries kind of get, got his greedy eyes on it. That was you not too long ago, remember? Uh. Just a while, I guess, Gina, but... Well, it's been out order. Is it fair to say that you've only owned that trunk since this morning's trial? What? What are you trying to say? Come on, this trunk's gone with me everywhere. Always has. Where have you been last year? Try not to incur your wrath, mainly. Uh, oh, I just realized she's got a little... She's got the police badge on her arm. I don't think she had that before. All right, let's talk. You shouldn't hear them talking about at the yard now. You shouldn't hear them talking about the yard now. They should be ashamed of themselves. The saying that it was the boss who killed all the bludgers. Ah, uh, you mean the whole Reaper thing? Yeah. Apparently, the boss was investigating stuff that no one else in the yard knew nothing about. Stuff to do with all the criminals. What's got all scot free? Yes, the ones that are prosecuted by Lord Vatzix, he's bribery and corruption to evade conviction. Well then, obviously, it was a bloomin' reaper given the orders, wouldn't it? But, why would people be suspecting Inspector Gregson of being involved in the killings? There's a notebook in his office! Oh no, hang on. I have a command for this. Oh no! That doesn't sound good. It, that details about all the crimes that have been pled, pled as the Reaper's work. What? No! Did you see it, Gina? Did you see the notebook? I want 
why even let me? Cause I'm just an apprentice, apparently. It was me who found it, and he was my boss. That's right. I pray myth about it, so. I just need to pick out what it's said to me. Oh. That's our Gina. So, you managed to see what was written in Gregson's secret notebook anyway, did you? Why, I see it. It's my right to read what he wrote. What had he written, Gina? Date, times, place, and names. A oh, long, long list of them. All oh, details about the blood is supposed to have been, been done by, in by the Reaper. But, there could have been an explanation for that. Perhaps there was a record of the inspector's investigations onto the Re Reaper's activities. Exactly! That's what I said! That's the first thing you'd think, right? And it happens. It was four names I recognize anyway. Well, the Reaper's targets were almost exclusively known le leaders of London's criminal underworld. Oh yeah, but one name right at the end that was a bit odd. At the end of the list, you mean? I'm pretty sure the date against it was October 31st, Halloween. Oh, the day before the inspector was found dead. So, what was the odd name? It was like a name I haven't seen before. Something like, uh... Ah, uh, it's no good. I can't remember it. Damn it. I don't think it was an English name, put it that way. Oh, great. Oh, dear. What a pity. Something else, too. I don't know if it matters. The same name keeps coming up over and over. Shin, it was. Don't spend as much as anything but... Oh, back to Shin, is it? Did you say Shin? <laughs> eh? What, what does it mean, Sullivan? My friend seeks to the name, too. He mentioned her as well. That woman who actually did the deeds. And now, we find out her name appeared in Gregson's secret notebook. <sighs> we haven't seen you for a little while, have we, Gina? Well, of course not. I've been busy here. You best get all that. Last of the yard, I'm trying to chase the boss and move in the day before it happened. The day before? That'll be the underco undercover investigation into the Redhead League, then. Oh, the boss didn't go, did he? He found some cove was pret what, was pretending to be him, didn't you, coach? Didn't you, Oda? I, co where did I get coach from? Yes, it was Mr. Vigil who actually went to the park on Lime Street that day, posing as Gregson. Well, anyway, we ain't the only one turning stuff up. I got me own ways of getting results. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's right, the dog. With me and my partner here got together, there's nothing we can't track down. Oh, little Toby. He's such a faithful friend. So, have you tracked any anything down then? What'd you think, eh? Of course we have. Can't tell you the po police business in it. Ugh. Anyway, the point is, if you lot ever need help, you know where to turn to, right? Me and Dale are around here. Right. Because he looks oh so hellish, honestly. <laughs> He looks at he's adorable. What we're gonna talk about the dog? Okay, fine. Uh Gina, about your hellhound there. Chief Inspector Toby, you mean? He's the prize of force he is. In Japanese, police dog means something quite different. Not altogether nice in those involved in crime. Aw. But here, Brynn. It's a wonderful compliment, it seems. For a canine, at least. Should be. After all, in the Great Exhibition case the other day, it was Toby who, who managed to locate Drebus' workshop. Maybe it's time for another demonstration of what the super dog can do, eh? Do we have something the Chief Inspector couldn't catch the scent of? I wonder. Hmm. Okay. The hairpiece? Uh... Let's try this. Take that! Well, Chief Inspector Toby, if you wouldn't mind having a sniff of this. He, 
<laughs> he might be a little too keen, don't you think? <laughs> ah! <laughs> the chief inspector made short work of Gina there. Ah! Look, look where he's, what he's gone to. Oh my, the trunk cl clearly still has a very strong scent. Inspector Gregson. In other words, it must have belonged to him. Alright, it's a fair cop, I suppose. He really got away with it, too. Yo, oh, no, jeez, wrong voice. He always talks so proudly of Chief Inspector Toby's nose and what I can achieve. Do not cross your mind that he might identify something that was right next to us. Yeah, that was a bit of a blue one, wasn't it? That's enough now, Gina. Yeah. I think it's time you told us the truth about that trunk. Okay, well, I guess that worked out. I, from the way that it didn't even show the hair piece, I think that yeah, I think we might have actually. I think we probably could have presented a couple of things. I just I just chose the hair piece because I figured it might show like the like it might preserve the sense more it, it weren't like that it, it just weren't what are you talking about i know what's going on through that head of yours but hey what happened all right then what did happen uh, it, it looks like it scratched on the side of it well like i said before we we're trying to chase the boss of movements so i let toby here have a whiff of the boss overcoat and since I done that, it went out like a shot. Straight to the sandwich. To a sandwich, not to a bag of chips or fish. Mister never heard. I, I believe Gina means the witness. Ah, oh, the friggin' the, the friggin' uh, horse carriage shiver man. Oh, I forgot about that sandwich. I also forgot that's his name. In this persona. Yeah, I had it between the word boards of his the boss's trunk. You mean I only heard the sound of like a gunshot and all piled in here. Exactly! He downed it from the scene! Goodness! Me and the chief inspector gave that sandwich a good grilling, and you know what he said? <laughs> I thought it might finish a good prize. Uh, the job wouldn't be needed anymore. So, but that's all I did. <laughs> I, whoa, whoa, what do you have to eat the team? See how the dead boss is not to fly. Oh, jeez, I, I didn't expect to do the freaking sandwiches voice ever again. So, Miss Phoenix wasn't the only one to meddle with the scene of the crime then. How could they? So anyway, that's how it happened. Hey, it's a pretty decent trunk. I figured I might as well make use of it. Is there something wrong with that, eh? Well, well, it's not the scene of the crime. Maybe you and Mr. Sandwich should try to find the answer to that question together. I think perhaps the trunk should be turned over to the police, don't you? What are you on about? I am the police! Gina, if you wouldn't mind, could maybe examine it? Yeah, all right then. Do what you want with it. Thank you. We should make a detailed report of our examination of the evidence. All right, well, let's take a look at this thing. There's a scratch on the side. I know it's that first thing. Uh-oh. What's the matter with Toby? Why is he acting so aggressively toward me all of a sudden? I never heard. I'll be careful. Must be the trunk. Ah! <laughs> Tommy, I. What are you doing? You gotta lick his face off. I never heard. I never heard. Oh, Gina, quickly, hail the carriage. That legitimately scared me. Oh, Mr. Nerd, are you alright? Uh, 
this sort of... Ah, cautious again at last. Plus, plus it really mildly, you fellow. After all, after all, to drop dead in a moderate, after a moderate liquid by a small terrier, most unseemly. What is or isn't seemly isn't... What is or isn't seemly isn't relevant here, Mr. Schultz. I'm sort of glad there's no lasting damage. How are you feeling? I'm fine, thank you. Did you bring me back here? Ah, what's this on my head? A bandage. Sadly, we have no ice. That's a compress of sugar water. Sugar water. Don't worry, Mr. Nerdo. It's the first aid treatment that my father taught me. Oh, thank you. So let us take tea when you're feeling up to it. But of course, no sugar in the patient's cup. Ugh, the bump of my head is throbbing sweetly enough. Don't worry. <laughs> Whenever you feel ready then. Uh, I don't feel so good. Let's, let's examine this thing. All right, there's a scratch in here or something. Have you seen this huge gash on the side of the trunk here? It's gone right to leather into the middle beneath. Okay, so... Okay, so it is a leather trunk. Okay. Gosh, no matter chests like this that have been so badly damaged. But it made the gash must have struck the side of the trunk with considerable force. What had happened? I'm gonna unlatch this thing. Well, we even have a key for this. Let's have a look inside. Oh, okay, it just opens. Uh, got bottles. There's a blood stain on this side. Uh, let's check the notice first because we opened it. Look, there's something inside. Oh, let's see. It appears to be a passport authorizing him to travel overseas. Inspector Grayson about to go on a trip abroad then. Perhaps the day of the departure might tell us something. That was... Oh! What is it? It's, it was for travel on October 31st. Just one day before the incident. Ah, what? What? Really? Oh, got the passport now. Grayson went to France the day before his body was discovered. And then also... The blood stain. I guess this proves that this is the scene of the crime. Look at the stuck stain here. Do you think? Yes, I'm afraid so. I think it's blood. Uh, I gotta say that. So that presumably means but this was present at the scene when Inspector Gregson was killed. It's the most logical conclusion, yes. I think Gina's been carrying this around with her. If you didn't know any better, because it does look like a greasy stain from all the fish and chips. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. Hold on. Uh, Fires Gregson, password number, blah, blah, blah. Day departure within one week of th October 31st. Or Dunkirk. He did talk about going to France. Police business. Mission for the applicant. And one additional person to travel. One additional person? Was he going to actually take Gina? No. Gina? Oh, wait, this is the tutorial thing, I think. Oh, yeah, right, Mr. Nero. It's rather unusual to find ourselves here in the middle of our investigation. And it's just occurred to me that I might have forgotten something when we left this morning. Please don't worry. As long as you continue to investigate thoroughly, you won't go far, go far wrong. Oh, yes, of course. Let's get back to work as soon as possible. All right, well, that was... That was what, basically the, the same what-to-do thing. Uh, thank you for your concern, Mr. Sholmes. Why do you feel I think that was a guy? I must say, it was quite startling when I heard that you'd been attacked by a dog. For a moment, I feared that the infamous murder of, of so many had come back from the dead. Hang on, I'll, I'll be right back.
Sorry about that. Dog stuff. And let me just double check to see if everything's working. Sounds good. And I... I'm talking, of course. Yep, yep, yep. Good, good, good. Let's go. You mean, a professor? Fortunately, I see your price throw is unscathed. That stiff... That stiff turnip collar of yours is obviously a forest of welcome protection. Was I that close to death? All I re really remember is the dog licking my face over and over and over again. Well, if you wish to avoid such troubles in the future, a little mustard spread on the cheeks should do the trick. <laughs> I'm not sure if dogs can eat mustard. I should think that that would, that would balance the sweetness of your bandage rather splendidly. Alright, well. Are we supposed to move? Alright, let's, let's just relax for a little bit. Is that Mikatoba? What is this music? What on earth is going on in here? Am I having a bad dream? Ah, no. It's an old German folk song. Rather a fine rendition, I think. Yeah, I, I was trying to. Considering Migato was passed out on the couch, I was trying to, I was trying to listen if it was Japanese. No, that's definitely German. That's the least of my concerns. Um, Iris. Iris, what's the matter? Um, who is that sprawl? I mean, that relaxed gentleman over there. Iris? Ah, uh, is she even listening? Excuse me, sir. I do apologize for troubling whilst you're singing so merely, but... You should be so kind enough to explain the situation. Uh, that worked. A crooning gentleman and a mute young girl. Rather tantalizing juxtaposition. Ju ju juxtaposition. One that appears to incite the gods of destruction with his beat to find their voices too. Ah, Mr. Sholmes, do you mean? Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, I kind of thought we were going to do something, one of these. Hang on. Do I want to do this now? I'll, I'll, I'll continue with this, I guess, for now. And I'll decide when I get to the actual thing. The strains of, the strains of reasoning within me are plagued now. It's a delight, delightful to it. What melody? Sings of a reunion full of nostalgia. What was the other? It's a morose theme about a great secret you're trying to so desperately conceal, Iris. She's turned over, she's turned over as white as a sheet. So as usual, you've instantly seen the very heart of the, uh, the matter. And by the time of my own, my own brief performance is over, I feel sure this gentleman's song will, will reach its finale. So then, to my magic land, where all is sweetness and delicacy and harmony. Pray, do do enjoy Herlock Sholmes' great logic and reasoning spectacular. Next time. Yeah, I've decided. I'm getting hungry. It's nearly seven o'clock. This could tr take us into the trial, and this is definitely a good place to stop. I could go long like the that one time. I don't really feel the need. 
But, yep. Seems like everything was went fine this time. The sound and everything. Thank goodness. Next time on Gray's Tourney, Sholmes's deduction. I'm not sure if it's the last one because I'm not because I I don't know if there's I still don't know if there's four cases in this game or five. It seems like they're making making it out to be that, that this is the last case, but there's still like a whole lot of secrets that could be left for a fifth case. Plus, I want to play as Sasato again. And they could actually set that up. Well, anyway. I will see you next time. Bye-bye!